to do a little bit of a recap. Um, as we began to think about strange attractors and chaos, we started with the Lorenz system. The Lorenz system was a system of three differential equations, so a flow in time, and we could integrate those differential equations to find a trajectory. What I've plotted here is a single trajectory of the Lorenz system. I dropped the uh, initial transient while that trajectory was approaching the Lorentz attractor. And so what I've plotted here is the portion of the trajectory that was close to the attractor. And we can really see the standard structure of the Lorentz attractor coming through here. The two um, symmetric lobes that are thin, flat sheets and that, um, and that connect um, somehow coming together. And uh, as we were analyzing the Lorenz system, we were determining whether there were periodic, stable periodic structures um, within this attractor or whether this attractor was indeed aperiodic. And we learned about sensitive dependence on initial conditions um, and those kinds of things. And one object that we looked at as we were analyzing the Lorenz system was um, was the Lorenz map. And this was, as we spiraled around a lobe, we looked for a lar the largest value of z before, um, before z returned to a small number. And the, we kept these maximum values of z and put them into a map. So if I were at this large value of z, the next time z hits a maximum, it would be this value. If I were at this value of z, the next time z hits a maximum, it would be at this value. Okay, and so that formed this structure that, um, that brought us to looking at maps. And something that we learned about this map is that its steepness was always steeper than the 45 degree line. And that meant that any fixed points of this map were unstable. So even though there is some, some trajectory in the Lorentz system where we go from a large z to the same size z uh, and associated with this fixed point, that trajectory is unstable. And because this was everywhere steeper than one, approximately, um, that suggests that if we find a period two structure that comes back to itself, uh, not on immediately, but, but, but after two cycles around, that that too would be unstable and that any period n structure we would also expect to be unstable. After looking at the Lorenz map, we immediately began to look uh, at the logistic map, and we learned about the orbit diagram of the logistic map. This isn't quite the image of the logistic map that we're used to looking at. This is a shifted logistic map. Instead of ranging in x from 0 to 1, x is ranging from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and its height has also been shifted down by 0 0.5, so it's ranging from negative 0 0.5 upwards. R is, again, as usual, adjusting, adjusting the height and also the steepness of this curve. And with the logistic map, we learned about its orbit diagram, um, first with one stable state, and then with a period two stable state, a period four stable state. So we learned about the sequence of period doubling bifurcations, where this fixed point became unstable, and a stable period two state was born. That became unstable, a stable period four, etc. And then there were some other characteristic features of this orbit diagram, including these period three windows. Um, and something that interesting about this diagram was that if we zoomed in on a small part of it, it looked quite a bit like the whole the whole diagram. So there was some notion of some kind of distorted self-similarity within this diagram. And that led us to learn a bit about fractals and to look at the fractal attractors um, that occur uh, in chaotic systems that uh, enable trajectories to move aperiodically. Um, but something that we didn't talk about when we were looking at the logistic map is we didn't talk about the fact that the logistic map is not the only map that has an orbit diagram that looks like this. Here's the quadratic map. It's really similar to the logistic map. Um, 
It's not a surprise, given how similar it is, that it has a very similar orbit diagram with the same structures, the period doubling, the, um, the, the intermittent windows. Here's period three very prominently. There's a period three again, but so really a period six, um, etc. And not a surprise, this is basically the same map as the logistic, just a modest transformation. But here's the sign map. The sign map is really a different thing. It's not a polynomial function, it's a transcendental function. And yet, the sign map also has a very similar structure of period doubling bifurcations. There's that period three window again. And even leaving maps, uh, a system that we learned about as we were, as we were um, learning about the fractal attractor in the Lorenz system was the Rossler system. And that was a toy system that was a little bit easier to think about than the Lorenz system. And here's, um, here's a bifurcation diagram for the Rossler system where two of the parameters are being held fixed and the third is varied. There's a lot of structures in here that we don't recognize from the logistic map and that's because there's various mechanisms, um, routes to chaos that we haven't talked about. But something that we can see here is that same period doubling structure that we were used to from the logistic map orbit diagram, um, including a, a period three window. Um, and this is, this is a, basically a, a Poincaré map um, for the Rossler system where um, we're watching the, the value that the, the y, coordinate, uh, y coordinate returns to and it's, it's giving us um, this map-like shape. These images were taken um, right here at the parameter value corresponding to this label, label number two. And so what we're going to look at now is what leads to these similarities in these orbit diagrams um, both between different maps and um, also the self-similarity that occurs within the map where when we zoom in we're getting very similar structures to the overall map.